What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we have a really short video. E1 versus S1 Black Swan. Which one is better? Which one should you go for if you want to get one of them? And I also threw in some extra Ruan May calculations for those of you who would want to know. Before we begin, I want to take this opportunity to let you guys know that you guys are amazing. I have received so much support in these past couple videos. And it's all thanks to you guys. We passed 3,000 subscribers, so thank you. And let's just get right into this video, man. All right, starting off with the baseline, as always, the attack column, we just have a regular Eyes of the Prey S5 build with 476, 20% from Traces, 43 attack from Orb, 43% attack from Rope. We have the 352 from the Hands, 14% in Subs, 12% from the Relic set, which is the Prisoner set, and then 25% from Pan Cosmic because we are over 100% effect hit rate. For our effect hit rate sources, we have 43% Chest, 17 in subs, 40 from the Eyes of the Prey S5, 10 from Traces, 10 from Planar, and that is 120%, which is going to give us our max uh, effect hit rate damage bonus over here. The 48% dot damage boost is from S5 Eyes of the Prey, which gives us a total of 234 damage bonus right here. Uh, for the resistance multiplier, I'm going to calculate this against the highest resistance multiplier enemy that we have, which is True Sting. True Sting has a 20% resist to wind. Aside from that, we have the 25% vulnerability multiplier from Black Swan's ultimate. And we also have her damage, uh, her defense reduction from her skill, as well as 20% here is from her talent. When it when it when you're over the seven stacks, this is what this is what this is. The extra six percent is for the prisoner set. We're only counting one debuff since by herself she can only do one debuff. I mean one dot. And with all of this, our baseline damage is 23,856, which is the average of all her dots stacks from one through 50 averaged out. So this is this, this is the way I've been doing my damage calculations the whole time. Um, but over here in each column are the individual damage numbers for each amount of stacks if you're interested. By the way, the spreadsheet is going to be in the description and I'm also going to be pinning it in the comment section just in case you guys want to play around with the spreadsheet. So for the sake of simplicity, the first thing we're going to add is the E1, which is adding the 25% resistance reduction. For those of you who don't know her E1, what it does is enemies afflicted with wind shear, bleed, burn, and shock will have their corresponding tab resistances reduced by 25%. How does this apply to Black Swan? Her ultimate makes it to where Arcana stacks count as all of them at the same time. So one Arcana stack counts as the enemy having Wind Shear, Bleed, Burn, and Shock, which means that while the enemy has Arcana, after Black Swan ults, the enemy is going to have 25% uh, resistance reduced to Wind, to Physical, to Fire, and then to Shock. It does not stack. She doesn't have 100. It's only 25 for her. All right, so to incorporate this into the formula, we're just going to have to subtract this from the resistance of the target, which is 20. So we're going to subtract this from 25, which puts it at negative five. And yes, it can go negative. And this is going to jump our resistance multiplier to 1.05. And that is going to drive our damage up to uh, around 31K. All right, for those of you that are curious, if we uh, if we were to add Ruan May, and with adding Ruan May, what we're going to add is another extra 25% resistance penetration over here, which makes our multiplier 1.3 and then she's also going to be giving us a 68 percent damage bonus among other things she's going to give us a little speed and uh, a weakness break efficiency but when it comes to damage this is the only thing that's going to apply and this is going to jump skyrocket our damage to 50,000. look at these dots look at this oh my god juicy dots juicy dots with the run may the s1 for you guys that don't know gives you 40 percent effect hit rate 20 percent attack and 28.8 percent defense ignore and how it works is that depending on how many different type of dots that your opponent has you know there's four different types of dots if you have all four it's going to give you five percent uh, of attack and then 7.2 percent of defense ignore per one and since her ultimate makes it to where arcana counts for all of them so you're going to get a total of 20 percent uh, attack and 28.8 defense defense ignore we already added the flat attack increase and the 20 percent light cone increase for the attack totaling at 38.93 pretty good almost 4k and then the defect is you know, i already added it down here for 54.8 and 34.8 and the total damage is 27,588. that is lower than the e1 by itself and then the reason for that is that the rest of the target is already at 20 percent which means damage uh, resistance reducing effects 
are going to have a damage amplification that's higher than regular damage amplifications because the enemy already has high resistance, which means that anything that we can do to reduce that resistance is going to have a much higher amplification damage to our overall damage. So had this been a 0% resistance target, damage would have been a little bit closer to each other. But since an MOC 12 uh, last stage is usually the true sting, I had to calculate this with 20% resistance to wind okay now let's add in ruan may 68 percent here and damage bonus and then 25 percent. look what happens when we add in the resistance penetration here look at our damage boom skyrocketed to 49k almost 50k the e1 ruan may is 50k this one is 49.4 and it's because of the same exact thing so because of the resistance penetration it's, it's going to just shoot our damage straight up and you're going to see the introduction of ruan may and the resistance penetration how it like just just completely skyrockets damage. Uh, we talked about the E1 by itself, S1 by itself, but now let's add in the the E1 to the S1. Currently we are on the S1. Uh, we have the 582 and then the 20, and then we also have the defense reduction over here. So now let's add the 25% resistance reduction. So this just goes to negative five. And then our damage is going to jump up to 36,209, which is higher than both. Obviously, E1 is E1 S1 is higher than E1 and S1 separately, obviously. But now, what, what people really want would want to see is with Ruan Mei, because everybody's going to be running here with Ruan Mei. So let's add in the 68% damage bonus, and then let's add in the 25% penetration. And boom, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, 61K, or damage just, just, just lift off straight to the moon. 61k E1 S1 with Ruan May. Um, Ruan May provides so much value to uh, Black Swan, especially against enemies that resist wind. And it's going to be the same thing for Kafka for enemies who resist shock, and then for all the dots for enemies who resist that type of damage. So Ruan May invaluable for dot units. As always, I have a visual representation of the data. S1 comes in at 15%, almost 16%. Pretty low, but it's also because of the resistance thing that I talked about. But even though the damage is almost half of what the E1 is, I still think the S1 is more valuable. And the reason for this is that the 40% effect hit rate is, is if you can't get the 120% effect hit rate on Black Swan, then you're missing out on so much. Not only you're missing out on the damage portion, but you're only you're also missing out on possibly missing Arcana stacks. And then you need to get the Arcana stacks for her to deal her damage. So having higher effect rate, effect hit rate is going to allow you to hit more of those stacks. So you want to prioritize effect hit rate. I can't stress that enough. It's the same thing with Ron May. You want to you want to prioritize break effect. But still, E1 by itself is really good. If you can get 120% effect hit rate on, Bla on Black Swan, E1 is also, it, it, it just boosts her damage like significantly. E1 S1 also is really, really good. But just E0 with Ruan May, it's always it's already better than S1 E1. So if you already have Ruan May, and you're in, oh, I misspelled Ruan May. But if you already have Ruan May and you're going for Black Swan, you don't need the E1 or the S1. You're, you're gonna be sitting good. You're gonna be, you're gonna be riding good. But if you're one of those people that want to take it to the next level, because we, this is an E1 versus S1 video. So E1 with Ruan May, E1, S1 with Ruan May, 49K, 50K, very, very similar, like, like almost no difference. So what would I recommend if you are in this particular scenario right here? If you can get to 120% effect hit rate with uh, Eyes of the Prey, go for the E1. If you cannot, if you don't have Eyes of the Prey, go for the S1. That's my recommendation. E1, S1, Ruan May, almost 157%. You can see the disparity in this graph right here. Uh, that's going to be it for the video, guys. Uh, make sure you take a look at the spreadsheet. It's in the comment. It's in the description. So, yeah, that's going to be it for today. And until next time, guys, see ya.